first camp was built here in 1964. Um, it went for sale in 2010. We, uh, we purchased it in the fall of 2010. In 2011, uh, our first season of operations, we had 243 salmon uh, released for the year. Uh, so we, we, were, we were shocked at how few fish that um, were in, in the river system at that time. Uh, so we immediately uh, instituted catch and release. Well, this season will we'll be over 1,100 salmon released. When we first began the concept of um, engaging science on the rivers, the first people we went to were uh, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. I'm Martha Robertson. I'm a research scientist with Fisheries and Oceans Canada in St. John's, and I research Atlantic salmon. So in Newfoundland and Labrador, we actually have the majority of Atlantic salmon in eastern North America. So the population of small and large salmon here represents most of the salmon that are actually produced in North America in the rivers. We wanted to know where the salmon spawn, uh, the times that they enter the river, uh, the times they depart the river, the actual spawning beds, uh, the intra-river movements. So we are looking at using radio telemetry and acoustic telemetry, which is tagging fish with electronic tags, and we're able to follow them through the river and as they migrate out into the ocean, trying to keep these populations healthy. So if we notice anything, you know, fisheries manager could make decisions to sort of change bag limits or have a catch and release only fishery so we can maintain the healthy populations. Put a fly tag in the descent and those salmon that Fred got is about 15 pounds. 85 centimeters. A catch and release is beyond antidotal. Our, our logbook uh, clearly indicates that um, our numbers have increased, uh, but also the size of the fish has increased. Our, our 10 to 19 pound class have gone exponential. They've gone from 34 uh, salmon um, in 2011, and uh, the 10 to 19 pound class will, uh, will be over 200 this year. So 25% of the population is um, big fish now. So we'll send these scales back to DFO and they'll de determine and tell us exactly how old the fish is and uh, its whole uh, life cycle, when it departed as a spolt, when it came back to the river first, or if it, in fact this may be its first time as a set of 14 pounder. So I, I think the ultimate point is that an ecosystem such as the Hunt River can recover when given the opportunity. And I think this, is, this can be a template uh, for many rivers, whether it be on this side of the Atlantic or the other side.